Yes. Okay. Hello and good evening, everyone. I'm Corina Pereira. Welcome once again to our SGR Knowledge Foundation Knowledge Series. The session of Knowledge Series is organized every month. Irrespective of the pandemic and lockdown, the sessions of Knowledge Series will continue to encourage, motivate, and enhance the energy of the audience of Knowledge Series. Knowledge Series is a point of origin for the Central India's first multilingual literature festival or in city literature festival that is OCLF Nagpur. OCLF is now entering into the fourth edition this November 2022 after the success of past three editions of it. Knowledge Series session is now a part of Orange City Literature Festival. Today's session is the 64th session of the series and is supported by Readomania Publication. To give you an uh, idea about our today's session, just want to know how many of us would want a real sneak peek into the workings of the income tax department and the lives of taxmen? How are tax rates organized? What happens when a politician or a film star is raided? Do they threaten the taxmen? In what unique ways is cash hidden? How do taxmen deal with the unpopularity of their job? What is the training that is imparted to them? To get the answer of these today, we have our speaker, Mr. Ajay Mankotia. Ajay Mankotia pursued BA in Economics from St. Stephen's College, Delhi University, followed by a master's degree in Economics from the Delhi School of Economics, Delhi University. He also has a diploma in International Economics Relations from the University of Paris and master's degree in law LLM from Law Center, Delhi University. Ajay, who joined the Indian Revenue Services in 1982 has worked at a wide variety of posts in the Indian government, including Chief Vigilance Officer of some public sector fertilizer companies. He retired as a commissioner of income tax with voluntary retirement in 2008 after having spent 26 years as a taxman and joined a media company as president of corporate planning and operations. He presently runs his own tax and legal advisory. With his vast areas of interest, Ajay regularly writes articles on tax, vigilance, music, films, sports, defense, and other, of, other topics of interest in newspapers and online news portals. He is married to Atima Mankotia and has a daughter and a son. We welcome Sir Ajay Mankotia who is going to speak and discuss on life of a taxman in conversation with Ms. Reema Gupta. Our moderator, Reema Gupta, is a brand consultant and design thinking facilitator with over 32 years of experience across many categories, type of clients. She enjoys facilitating brand and business owners to reach solution based on customer and stakeholder empathy. She started her career in brand management with PNG and then moved over to management consulting with Deloitte. She headed the Delhi office of Quadra Advisory, a specialist brand consultancy, and then later was the country head of the consulting, consulting business of Kantar known earlier as Henry Center, the Futures Company and TNS Concern. She was also the strategy head solution digitals of 360 degree communication and implementation agency. Reema has worked on several brand uh, positioning, brand architecture, new product development, innovation projects for brands like Tata Motors, Nestle, IDC and many more enabling them to build a strong, sharply positioned brands. Welcome you, ma'am. I you. request uh, ma'am to kindly take over the session. Okay, Th thanks. So, Ajay, you got a great glowing uh, introduction all about the academic part of it and the kind of things which you did uh, in your career. But tell me a little bit about your childhood. Let's get to know you as a human being. <laughs> I think my, uh, my father was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. He was a transport pilot and um, 
he moved from station to station every two three years, and uh, our schooling also changed. Therefore, I started my schooling uh, in uh, Wellington in the Nilgiris, where our father was doing a course in the Defence Services Staff College. Mm -hmm. Then uh, subsequently in Calcutta and South Point School, and then uh, Air Force Bal Bharti in Delhi and Mount Saint Marys in Delhi. Then uh, in Chandigarh, I did uh, my schooling in Saint John's. And then finally, uh, in 1970, my father got posted as station commander uh, Guwahati. Mm -hmm. uh, the family decided that my mother and the three children would stay back in Delhi, rent a house, and we'd finish our schooling from uh, Delhi itself, which okay. we did. I was in the Air Force Central School in Delhi Cantonment from class 8th to class 11th. Those days, we didn't have any class 12. Mm. Uh, so I passed out of Air Force Central School. And, uh, um, so from the very beginning, there was this uh, sense of public service. This uh, my my uncle, my father's younger brother, he joined the army. He retired as a as a lieutenant general. My brother, uh, he joined the Indian Navy. So uh, there was this spirit of public service that that uh, was uh, prevalent in our house right from the start and. Uh, Therefore, it was very natural for me to uh, have gone to a, a government service, now, whether mm -hmm. armed forces or, or um, civilian services. Uh, my father, uh, uh, he, he wanted me to do the civilian bit and my brother the defense bit. So we honored his, uh, his wishes and, and, uh, and that's how I joined the service. Okay. The school I... I um, I uh, did my BA honors from St. Stephen's uh, and then um, economics from Delhi School of Economics and then took the exam. And then uh, during the course of the service, uh, which I cleared, of course, I, I, I had, of course, wanted uh, the uh, IFS and the IES, but my rank wasn't high enough for me to get the services. And I opted for income tax, as, which I thought was the best service and I still think is the best service amongst the Central services, I got that, and during the course of the service, I also did uh, LLB uh, from um, the Faculty of Law evening classes, Delhi University. Okay. Uh, worked for twenty six years in the tax department. I had a very very good innings with them. Um, worked in various posts. Uh, very very challenging assignments. Uh, so every. Um, kind of life that uh, the tax department could offer. And uh, in 2008, decided to take uh, VRS mm -hmm. and join uh, NDTV as President Corporate Planning and Operations. I was with them for about nine years. And then December 2017, I retired from there and I set up my own tax and legal advisory firm. OK. OK. And uh, you know, Ajay, for instance, uh, being a person who doesn't really, uh, who's not in the services. For me, the word taxman is a boogeyman, somebody who sits outside and says, okay, you haven't paid your taxes and hence I'm going to come in. That's been the image in our minds, but uh, are they really like that? I mean, what is so, it about? So your image is absolutely right. It's absolutely mm -hmm. right and uh, representative of, of the image that most of the countrymen have of, of, of the taxman. So let me uh, give you two examples before I, I, I answer your question. Um, I underwent a medical procedure many years back. Mm. And, um, I was lying on the operation table and the doctor um, told me that he'd be giving me an anesthetic shot and that it would mm. pinch me a little. So be prepared for it. So he plunged the needle in and then uh, uh, after that he said, um, uh, I hope that in pain. Mm. I said, doctor, well, it did and you also know it, it would have. <laughs> So then he, uh, along with his team, you know, wearing masks and uh, this, this and light on top, and, uh, <laughs> he then uh, looks down at me and says that uh, now you know how we feel when we go to the tax department. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I uh, empathize with this thing. <laughs> no, no, so so I completely understood where he was coming from, and then uh, one other very interesting incident. Uh, I I I. I I sing also, um, uh, of course, all amateur. And uh, I was uh, a member of a singing group. And we used to meet every month in uh, 
the members houses turn by turn and there was this lady who just joined the group and her husband was a businessman and it was her turn to to host us so um i was introduced to her and uh, when she heard that i was from the tax department you know you you won't believe it and it just happened before my eyes she started trembling and you know started sweating and she had to sit down and they had to fan her and 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 um, she took took a while to get back to normal and uh, um she of course became all right when she was told that i'm i'm retired now <laughs> and uh, then she asked me a very very bizarre question she said um, tell me if you were a taxman then then how can you sing <laughs> i can just <understand. laughs> so you are absolutely right this is the impression which most of the people have of a taxman a very very a serious sober person a shadowy figure who lurks in the background who uh, catches hold of the unsuspecting taxman uh, uh, who whose only job is to harass and to uh, to who takes a perverse pleasure in in in, in troubling you uh, and let me assure you that none of this is true he is just doing a job which is thankless uh, as you and i know uh he is doing it to the best of his ability he he does things which are absolutely as per law there are some aberrations of course here and there which happen in all services all departments but by and large he is a human being like you and me he also has aspirations he also has hobbies he also has a family he also likes to have a drink in the evening he also likes to take his children for ice cream he also does his crossword puzzles uh he also uh, loves to watch sport so uh he is absolutely normal and there's nothing to uh, fear if you're paying your taxes uh, fully and and uh, legally uh, there's nothing to fear at all absolutely not he uh, so the idea so i uh, you know this thing uh, was in my mind as to how to demystify uh, the tax men for for the public and how to bring him to center stage because there's hardly anything known about him people know about taxes they don't know what the tax man what what work work he does what are the challenges he faces um what are the kind of uh, uh situations that he that he has to confront with uh, how does he go about his job what does the job entail uh what is the tax department like uh what do they offer him by way of uh, personality development by way of his training by way of uh, taking care of his uh, uh, his uh, daily needs and uh, for his family so those are the kind of things which are absolutely uh, unknown in the public and yeah. i thought i should uh, bring it out no no that's uh, the, but you know what still ajay uh, we're still talking about the disciplinary part of it in the sense that there is a return which you uh, you know we file and people look at it what are the other aspects in the sense that you know there's much more about policy there's much more about a variety of things which you do for the general good of so so yes you know the thing is that he does not only assessment work which which is the kind of work which which most of the people are aware of mm. he also does appeal work he also does administration he also does management he also takes care of policy he also uh you know uh there uh, there's there's a running of office in world there's this uh, there's a there's a wide uh, variety of tasks to be to be completed um there are so many so many uh, objectives of the tax uh, laws which he has to uh, take care of now these tax laws are not only meant to collect revenues that's that's there of course that's a very very paramount uh, aspect but tax laws also do other things they for example promote savings they promote investments mm. they promote exports they promote r and d they promote uh, regional development so uh, these are the various tasks that the tax uh, laws um, are, are are crafted to comply with so uh, that's why the you know laws sometimes become complex because the objective is not a uh, single fold it is it is many yes. folds and uh, yes. that's why they become a little complicated they become a little uh, complex and uh, beyond the comprehension of of many people but if you sit down with the 
laws and study them properly, they are not finally very, very complex. As long mm -hmm. as you understand the objectives of the tax laws, you understand what the purposes are, you understand uh, what they're meant for, uh, the lofty ideals that they, they seek to comply with, you will then understand the context and, the, and therefore understand why the laws are the way they are. Yeah. But tell me, Ajay, like for instance, uh, like in your career, so there could be times when, A, of course, you were looking after the disciplinary part of it, and there were times when you were looking after the policy part of it, or probably it was a combination of both. But uh, the more interesting part is always the disciplinary part of it. Were there instances when uh, things were very different? You faced one situation and the other was totally different? I've written a book uh, on my, my uh, experience in the tax department. Okay. Called, uh, there's seven for you, three for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a book which uh, covers uh, the entire gamut of my experience in the tax department. Mm -hmm. uh, all the offices that I've held, all the posts that I've held, all the experience mm -hmm. I've had, which will give an idea to the reader as to uh, the kind of work we do. And... Um, it, it is peppered with anecdotes, with incidents, which seek to uh, highlight the work we do, the, the, the challenging work we do uh, uh, at many times. And uh, uh, it's in a very racy, irreverent, tongue-in-cheek style. I've seen it and I've uh, read through but, it. But, uh, uh, mm. The idea is to uh, counterbalance the, the, the serious, sober work that, that happens. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Therefore, I'd urge the uh, uh, our audience to to uh, buy the book from Amazon, read it. It'll give you an idea as to what the tax man is all about. It uh, uh, demystifies uh, him and uh, uh, the the impressions, the perception that people carry of the tax man will, I, I'm sure, uh, get purged to a large extent. Uh, so this book is divided into four parts. Uh, my experiences as a tax person and and uh, then articles on what I feel uh, needs to be done by the tax department to bring about changes to improve its working, uh, what are the uh, um, ills that plague it and uh, what can be done to, to alleviate uh, these, these issues, these problems. And uh, like I was told, like people were told in the introduction, I also served as the chief vigilance officer with the National Fertilizer Limited and some other fertilizer companies. So there's also a part on my experience uh, in, in that company. It was very, very interesting also. Mm -hmm. um, um, I learned a lot and brought it back to the tax department. And of course, vice versa, whatever things I'd learned in the tax department, I took it there and uh, um, it, it was, uh, so the working became uh, much more effective. And also articles on um, how to improve vigilance, how to bring in preventive vigilance, how to uh, make sure that uh, the wrongdoings that happen in certain pockets don't happen uh, at all. Yeah. So uh, it's a book in four parts, and uh, it 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 uh, it has all these incidents, all these anecdotes that you uh, are talking about. <laughs> uh, so of course no, we've had our share of raids. We've had our share of, uh, um, of issues in assessments. We've had uh, a, a very interesting. Uh, uh, training sessions, uh, both in India and uh, abroad. And uh, so I, I, I think the book will tell you all. No, no, I'm sure because I did uh, go through a few pages and I thought this was one of the easiest books to read, to be able to understand. But even though there is a book and it has so much of what uh, you've been through. So I'll, I'll, give you two, I'll give you two examples of, of, of the kind of work that we, we do. and. Uh, so we organized this raid in the in the mid 80s uh, uh, in in UP, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a raid organized from Delhi. And uh, when we went to UP, uh, uh, the local office organized the uh, the manpower for us, and uh, and also the police. Police is very very important for all the raids because um, you have to ensure that the law and order is maintained and uh, no harm comes to the to the team. So uh, early morning we we left for this politician's uh, house. He was running a business, which is not very far from his house. This was the suburbs of this particular town. And uh, he never ever expected us. I mean, he was a, a, a 
local MLA and uh, there is no, he could not even his wildest imagination think that uh, the tax team would arrive in the house. So of course we had this initial hiccup and uh, um, he didn't allow us in and then when he saw the, the, the manpower and the police then he finally uh, relented and then he started uh, extending his cooperation. Now in all grades uh, what happens is that we are supposed to also uh, call two witnesses, respectable witnesses from the neighborhood who witnessed the entire search and then who also put the signatures on the uh, on, your, on your warrant and uh, on the punch nama, which is the inventory of things that are finally found in the house. And uh, if you are uh, placing a seal on any door or any almira, then they also sign there. So it's very, very important to have these witnesses who, who uh, ensure that everything goes as per law. There's no harassment and uh, there's no illegality committed. Uh, and we asked him for two witnesses and he, he called the two witnesses, principal of the local school and, and a teacher. Nothing more respectable than that. And uh, so the raid started and we found stuff in various rooms which we started collecting and inventorizing. And uh, three, three hours later, we heard a massive racket from a distance. It started slowly approaching the house. Uh, now we were on the first floor and the police were in the courtyard. They were on the front, uh, the front side of the house and the back side of the house to ensure there's no entry and exit. And gradually the sound started approaching the house. And very soon it was right in front of the house, about two, three hundred school children with the bicycle chains, hockey sticks and, and rods shouting uh, income tax, Murdabad, Murdabad. Right. Oh. Uh, and uh, the police were by now absolutely you know, scared. You could make out from their, their demeanor, their, their body language, the faces that turned uh, ashen. And most of them were not armed. They had sticks only. Very few were armed. And uh, soon enough, uh, they stormed the, they broke the door, the gate and stormed inside the house. And then the uh, politician turned uh, and looked at us and then said, uh, And then we requested him to, you know, stop all this and said, uh, stopping a raid like this is very, very counterproductive and it'll, it's, it's, it's something that's going to hurt you in the end. He says, no question. I know this is a conspiracy hatched by my, my opponents in Delhi. And uh, I will not uh, allow this harassment to happen. And I will stop the raid. And now you tell me, what should I do with you? Now, what happens thereafter? How the whole thing panned out? How the whole thing, uh, you know, uh, turned into uh, what finally happened? We read it in uh, the book. Is something you have to read in the book. I can tell you that. But uh, it's something that we faced actually and something which, you know, uh, no amount of preparation, no amount of uh, teaching at the academy can 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 uh, equip you with it. It's, it's something which you have to deal with on the spot. Mm. Um, common sense or something else, whatever, and and deal with it. Mm. So we, we uh, how we dealt with it is, is to be read in the book. Uh, Did you feel scared for your family? Did you ever face threats which were connected with your family or something like that? See, mo uh, many of us do go through that phase once uh, in, our, in our careers, once or twice, where uh, things get very, very ugly during either raids or during assessments. Um, another raid happened in Delhi where a very well-known uh, film producer builder, uh, he took out his gun before the raid started and and, uh, and uh, threatened to uh, blow their heads off. And then um, because a particular diary was found which had the names of certain um, high profile people in it. And uh, then he uh, spoke with them and they, they urged him caution, they urged him to restrain himself and let the raid uh, continue. And said, ke raid ke baad That's also a very, very typical kind of thing that happens when people approach uh, 
you know people outside ki dekh lenge but there's no dekhna after that whatever is found whatever is uh, um, undeclared whatever is concealed uh, is then dealt with accordingly you 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 tax the untaxed income and you 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 levy penalty you levy interest and and uh, that that's how the the cases come to an end where mm-hmm. you finally uh, arrive at whatever has been hidden and concealed and untaxed uh, tax the amount and pay your penalties and and uh, and uh, get on with your life so uh, <laughs> no, this is as far as the tax is concerned now as far as the vigilance is concerned uh, again a very interesting incident which is also very very traumatic for me and uh, uh, i'm sure you hear it you also feel very very sad about the whole thing uh, you know many of our factories uh, have closed down because of unviability and, uh, and other reasons now sindri for example used to be uh, the toast of our uh, of of industrialization uh, in the initial years of independence mm-hmm. all foreign dignitaries used to be taken there the the the, the, the um, poster child of uh, the commanding heights of economy sindri of course shut down yeah yeah day. and may, there are many sindris like that in the country mm. of course now government is trying to revive them again for example the one in uh, uh, gorakhpur is being revived uh, uh, and similarly other factories also are being revived with with new technology with the uh, gas instead of uh, uh, your fossil fuel The, the, which was used earlier, and uh, but there are many many factories which are shut down, and therefore the people are in a very very bad shape. The colonies are still there, but colonies have no electricity, they have no water. Schools are there, but there are no, there are no teachers. There are dispensaries, but no doctors, no medicines. Uh, markets have shut down. Uh, parks are in uh, are in disuse. Uh, swings and 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 slides have rusted. uh it's it's a very very pathetic sight to see uh people eking out a uh, miserable existence in these colonies uh these are these are skeleton staff which looks after the the upkeep uh, or, or actually the the cases that are filed uh, at these places and also maintenance and uh, security so there was a, a complaint of some theft of some copper wires in a in a particular uh, plant in bengal and i went there to investigate now what happened was uh, the investigation is complete uh, the local uh, officers for 510 in number they took me out for lunch and even you know for example lunch also they didn't have any local budget the budget had to be approved from delhi and for the lunch so they took me out for lunch lunch over uh, the waiter came uh, and asked for dessert so i said no thank you very much uh, but you people can continue and uh, but they said no ice cream is very very good you must have to taste the ice cream so i i refused and this manager there kept insisting that i must have ice cream so i said you know what's your problem i i i i'm not a dessert person why are you insisting so he says sir i have uh, you must listen to this very carefully it was very very sad he said i have two daughters the ice cream that i ordered uh, i was and to pack it for her and i thought you also order and not eat your ice cream and i take that for my other daughter they haven't had ice cream in the last one year so i uh, of course immediately ordered uh, not one but many cups uh, and i i gave it to him and i but you know what what do you do there's nothing you can do it's it's a very very sad uh, yeah. existence they have it's it's pity about this the situation but anyway i hope things are now changing because these factories are again being uh, revived and uh, so let's hope things are now back to normal yeah. soon yeah so you uh, you know uh, so while there is a policy part to it a disciplinary part to it a vigilance part to it and you did talk about a softer aspects which are the other softer aspects of being a the government leader? also encourages uh, a lot of literary activities sporting activities um, cultural activities uh, uh, in the department Uh, they know uh, all work and no play will uh, make the taxman a very very uh, <laughs> undesirable <laughs> person. He anyway is undesirable to most people and make him more undesirable. So uh, how do, how to improve his uh, mm. his well being uh, 
and how how to make a more uh, sensitive how to make a more uh, um, you know uh, more uh, attuned to uh, to the fine arts uh, to poetry uh, how how to keep him in good health so we have this central revenue sports board which which promotes uh, culture and sports and literary activities in in both the departments um, in the, in the tax department as well as the uh, the customs and gst department and uh, people uh, participate very very uh, actively and you'll be surprised to know that many eminent sports persons from the country mm. have come from the tax department uh, uh joey chavla's father was in the tax department uh, narayan rane who was a minister now uh, he started in the tax department as a udc your chief minister is from the tax department Ooh. Uh, oh yes Oh yes, Kejriwal. So, uh, tax department has uh, proved to be a very fertile ground of of people who've done very very well outside, uh, whether in the sports activities or literary activities or cultural activities or political activities. Uh, so, uh, uh, we have a very active uh, sporting and and, and cultural, uh, uh, you know, um, activities in the department and. Uh, uh, of course uh, many many uh, places you have people staying in colonies uh, especially earmark for the tax department and therefore there's a lot of socializing there there's a lot of cultural activities that take place there you have diwali parties you have diwali melas you have uh, uh, yeah. they used to have uh, the uh, dandiyas organized and uh, so there's a lot of bonding amongst uh, the, the the officials of the tax department Mm-hmm. uh and uh, uh so it's it's a one big family which which uh tries to do work to the best of the abilities during 9 to 5 and and uh, and do absolutely normal activities like you and I do after 5 o'clock okay and how did your uh, wife fit into it i mean did she enjoy the culture did she enjoy the fact that you work there or it was like oh my god what have i done <laughs> you know she she's come she's comes from a uh, from a family uh, of of literary people her grandfather mm-hmm. was a very well known uh, uh, hindi uh, literature person called dr nagendra mm-hmm. and her mother and her her aunt were, uh, were professors for many many decades in, in delhi university her father was in cpwd which is the, which is a government department and he retired as a adg cpwd so he was an engineer so she she in uh, life in a, in a in a in a government uh, service uh, though she stayed with her mother most of her life in 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 the in the campus in the in the, in the university campus but she, but her father has been posted to various places and is to go and visit the father during the holidays so she knows uh, what these services are all about and how every 3 4 years we must be ready to pack our bags and move so so she 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 seen it all earlier also and she she accepted it when she married me in uh, and and um, saw the income tax department uh, so we were in uh, delhi we were in uh, bombay um, for many many years after bombay the family settled down in delhi and i went to alhabad and, and banaras after that and i took retirement from banaras only as commissioner okay so um, um uh, she didn't do very very interesting articles in the book which which uh, is her perspective on uh, life on um uh, on uh, the uh, very peculiar facets of the enterprise department every department has its uh, has its uh, peculiarities and its eccentricities and so does the enterprise department so she's covered um, two such in in the book parts to it mm. and uh, so uh it's it's a very interesting thing what she what she's written and uh, and you say anything boring which you've put in your book which you had to put because it's a book but was there anything which you felt oh my god why I, I would think not i would think not i think uh, uh, the article that i've written on what are the issues which the department is to confront with to improve its working and to make things more transparent could sometimes be uh, uh 
boring for some people but actually it's not boring it's it's something which people will identify with for example budget making the budget making is so much secrecy about it you know it, there's so much build up to it uh it starts many many months earlier where you have meeting with stakeholders you you the secrecy involved the how people are sequestered for many weeks before the budget is actually uh presented in that parliament uh, you must be aware of it uh, that how the people concerned are are locked up in uh, basements in uh, uh in the printing press uh, in the in the bowels of the north block and how they have no contact whatsoever with the families with the outside world and how the halwa ceremony which uh, takes place uh, before the exercise begins and how people are only let out once the budget is presented in the parliament now this kind of secrecy this kind of uh, that takes place uh, ever since uh, budget making started in the country is 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 not there in other countries budget making is a is, is an ongoing exercise and is an ongoing participation is an ongoing uh, uh, discussion with stakeholders and uh, there's no reason why um, it doesn't become a transparent exercise which involves everyone and uh, everyone contributes their 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 skills their 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 um, their, their uh, perspective on on how things should uh, change how things should improve uh, what are the priorities that the, the economy must have which are the areas where the government must emphasize and, and make budget therefore a participative exercise which is transparent and which it doesn't have to involve this kind of a hmm. you know um, to it kufia kind of, a kind of a, um, you know exercise so i've written what can be done there in that in that respect and similarly uh, um in other areas you know what are the uh, various things that can be done so uh, i think people will, will find it very uh, interesting and and they'll probably identify with with, with many of those kind of things that are done I What's your to... advice to us as people? You know, because you're talking about the tax department, but as people who file in our taxes, do a variety of things also, and look at the budget. What's your advice to us? So you know, my my first advice, which I tell everyone, is that a do not depend on your chartered accountant and lawyer completely. Okay. People come to grief mostly because they have absolutely no knowledge of their own affairs. Hmm. I'm not saying you get into the nitty gritty of of of, of what's happening. But you must have a, a bird's eye view of what your business affairs are. Uh, how much have you earned? How much are the investments you can make? What are the legitimate areas where you can uh, uh, invest or you know um, channel your 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 profits into to uh, um, to make your taxes uh, not only compliant but also lessen the burden uh, legitimately. and uh, do not leave it entirely to the tax accountant uh, tax advisor to handle your matter to the tax department i think once in a while you should go and and meet the uh, officer concerned which of course now is something that's not going to happen i'll come to that little later but mm-hmm. i've seen people leave it entirely to to their uh, uh, yes. the tax uh, accountants and then uh, uh, this also leads to you know sometimes a uh, misconception as to what's going on in the department hmm. uh, you you may not know the entire truth you may not know uh, what's actually happening uh, and therefore that leads to fear and uh, which is totally illogical it leads to uh, uh, you know a uh, wrong uh, idea about what's happening there it uh, leads to these wrong kind of uh, feelings about uh, perceptions about what's the tax man all about uh is he such an evil creature is he such such, such a person who's bent on harassing us and uh, you know using coercive methods uh, so these are things which which will uh, which could have if people that time had uh, also uh, decided to make at least one trip uh, to the tax department and see if things for themselves mm. so now what's happened is that uh, it's, it's a very very good new, uh, piece of news and uh, something which uh, was long overdue is that the interaction between the tax department and the tax payers and the representatives mm-hmm. has now come to an end yeah physical interaction mm-hmm. now everything is faceless mm-hmm. so this interaction that will take place and also lead to certain 
undesirable consequences is a thing of the past. We have now started what's called the faceless assessment scheme, where uh, you where you upload your returns on the system. The system will then allocate your case to to anybody. An to anybody in the country who you will not know. So your case hmm. being uploaded in Delhi may go to Vijayawada. Hmm. You will not know who the person there is. Hmm. He will then seek clarification, seek responses to the queries that he makes through what's called the faceless. Uh, uh, you know, uh, department, uh, the assessment yeah. department. So there will be no interaction directly between him and you. It will be routed through a uh, wire media, the, the faceless uh, assessment uh, um, office, we call it, the department, we call it. They will ask you to, to respond to the question that has been issued. You will respond again online. You will upload it. It will be uh, looked at by him if he feels that it needs some a uh, technical uh, look because it's 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 a technical matter. He will refer it to the technical uh, branch. If he feels that some inquiry is required, he'll refer it to the inquiry branch. Everything will happen anonymously. The taxpayer will not know who the person is, uh, and therefore uh, things will happen in a very transparent, rapid manner. Uh, there'll be no misuse. Uh, there will be that certainty. You will know exactly where you stand as far as the law is concerned. Uh, if they raise any query, you know how the department is thinking, and therefore you can counteract it with with the, um, the, the arguments in your your uh, possession, the facts that you have, and it will be a very very smooth, seamless, quick, transparent, uh, harassment free. Uh, Method of assessment. Yeah. There'll be a certainty that you, you'll know exactly where you stand, where the department stands. And therefore, you know, it, it won't take your time and uh, uh, get to any kind of in a situation which is worrisome, which takes away uh, your peace of mind. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also happening in the appeal stage. So, uh, of course, there, if you if you want to explain things in a better manner to the to the appellate commissioner, you have been given the provision now of presenting your side of the argument uh, in a virtual manner, uh, not physically being there. And uh, similarly, in the tribunal also, you have the choice of either appearing virtually or physically. Uh, physically, these days, uh, uh, is not possible because of the, the pandemic, but uh, to a large extent, Things have become now totally thanks to technology, thanks to the uh, awareness that uh, the interface needs to be minimized to a large extent uh, to prevent misuse has now been implemented. And uh, uh, not only here, but also things like refunds. Refunds now are processed immediately. They come to your bank account. You don't have to go now to the office and plead and beg with the uh, office to, to release the refund and uh, the attendant mischief that used to take place sometimes. Uh, everything is now automated. Technology has played a law, large role in uh, making things very, very um, easy for the tax person as well as for the taxpayer. Yeah, yeah. There That's are no better compliances because information is exchanged with other, other uh, departments the stock exchange, the SEBI, uh, the GST department, the banks, uh, um, and, and many such institutions, they pass on the information to the tax department. So the tax department has a 360 degree of what, what you're doing, all your, all your activities, all your transactions. And therefore, they know exactly if you have uh, complied 100% uh, with uh, the tax laws. And therefore, if you've done nothing wrong, if you've complied with uh, your, your tax laws, you, you've paid, you've declared full profits, you've declared that the appropriate taxes on it, there's nothing to fear. Don't put him on a pedestal. Don't decry him. He's just doing his job, which, which you find very, very painful. 
uh, you find uh, thankless. Uh, but he has to do it. Somebody has to do it. He does it. And therefore, I think you should appreciate what he does. Uh, he's doing it for the benefit of the nation. I mean, your yeah, tax yeah. Goes to, uh, to, to the budget and then uh, uh, it goes to uh, uh, fund so many activities which are which are meant for the, 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 the poor class, the, the agricultural class, the, the deprived, the, the uh, goes towards infrastructure. So all your money is being used in a very productive manner by the government. What you're doing is a very, very uh, noble uh, job of paying your taxes fully and, and correctly. And uh, the taxman is just doing his job. Mm. Tell me, uh, Ajay, see, th this was to us as people. But what about people who are joining the services? Why would you, I mean, would you, uh, what would be your advice to somebody who's choosing between different, uh, in the central services, who's wanting to choose different departments? Well, what as far as I'm concerned, I think the tax department is the best department among central services for the following two reasons. Mm -hmm. A, it is, it is a department which has a very direct, intimate, immediate con uh, connect with the public at large and with the nation. And let me explain. Uh, like I told you, the tax uh, laws uh, are not only meant for collecting revenues, but also to undertake many, many other activities. Promotion of savings, investments, R&D, exports, industrialization, development, uh, housing, uh, so, there's so many things you can do, uh, you know, from the side of the service. Uh, all these laudable objectives that the government has, has laid out are possible because of the tax department, because of the revenues that you collect, and because of the various incentives that are given to the public to invest in certain areas where you get a tax rebate, and therefore those activities are then encouraged. Now, for example, you get a rebate when you save. Mm. You invest in savings. You get a rebate. You get a rebate when you invest in housing mm. by way of interest or by way of the capital uh, that you that you uh, pump in. Uh, you get rebate when you when you uh, invest in certain R and D activities. You get rebate when you uh, set up a, a, a company uh, in a uh, in a tax free zone. Or a company in an undeveloped area. The reason being that once you get tax rebate, there's encouragement for people to channel their investments, their savings uh, into that particular area, and therefore uh, that thing gets promoted. So that's one very, very good uh, vital aspect of the tax department that you're doing all these things. Second is your intimate connect with the public at large. Mm. Uh, you can make you. It's it's up to you to make tax paying painless, to make it uh, uh, very, very effective, to make it very, very uh, efficient, to make sure there's no harassment, to make sure that uh, uh, the proper taxes are collected. Uh, you, you don't make any high-pitched assessments. You don't raise taxes which are uh, not due from him and then take course of measures to correct them. You know, like someone said, tax should be collected like the way Ani B collects nectar from a flower mm. without destroying it. Mm. So that's the way, that's the objective of the department. Make tax paying a very, very simple exercise, a painless exercise of the taxpayer. And also make policies in a manner which promote investments in particular areas, which the, which the government of the day feels are the priority, feels should be developed. And uh, so you're doing both things uh, simultaneously. So I think it's a very, very good uh, service. Profession to also, the professionalism that they instill in you, the uh, subjects that are taught to you when you're in the academy, accounting, law, management, administration, will stand you in good stead, not only in the department, but also when you leave the department. Mm -hmm. There's so many people who join good uh, well-known accounting firms, legal firms after they leave. They join uh, Settlement Commission, for example. They join uh, Authority for Advanced Ruling. Uh, Batman of mine has joined uh, as the Secretary General of the Rajya Sabha. Uh, there are, uh, there's, uh, our previous chairman has joined as, uh, he joined as Election Commissioner. He's now the Chief Election Commissioner. 
so there are because the government sees and so does the the, the, the people out the, so so does the, the the public outside the worth of the tax person the kind of training he does the kind of uh, languages as a kind of a uh, challenge he faces the kind of uh, issues that he is confronted with which all stand in good stead during the service and mm. after the service okay so because the the kind of work that you handle it's just outstanding it's it's just it's it's the gamut is so large is so it's so huge you you kind you handle every kind of work in yeah. delhi when i was posted i was handling a market i was handling retail trade mm. in bombay when i went i was started handling uh, uh, banks large banks psu banks uh, government companies uh, uh, subsidiary of rbi foreign companies uh, so just see the the, the the whole gamut is the, there the whole gamut of work you from a retail uh, the market to 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 uh, the other end of the uh, a corporate spectrum i handle the harshad mehta scam mm. how many people uh, uh, get to handle these kind of things in in their careers in other services so scam not only finding out what the scam entail but also finding out the taxability of of the illegal profits uh, the illegal earnings the illegal transactions that you carried out Mm. and uh, how to tax them and then they have the thrill of seeing uh, how the department how the cbdt supported you and how at various appeal stages uh, you were supported in what you did yeah, so it's, yeah. A, it's such a it's, it's such a you know um, uh, enriching experience that uh, the people <laughs> people uh, get to only see in the tax department so even you know the rates of course are, are there's a there's a big uh, uh, courtesy the film department uh, the, the films uh, that we have in the country they have the, the huge fantasy uh, about, the rate. Uh, about about uh, what happens in raids and uh, what's found in the raids but by only raids even normal assessment that you do on a daily basis uh, the ability to find out whether your books are correct and full the ability to ferret out what the reality is from the books from the documents that you uh, have uh, is it self such a pleasurable uh, and 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 such a challenging exercise the the uh, the need to uh, see whether the books are properly written or not whether they they conceal something whether anything um, requires to be taken a further um, to investigate further are the other things you know which 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 um, challenges which um, any investigative um mind interest mind that you may have so it's a very interesting uh, uh, department uh, uh, policy making for example um, what are the areas where pub, uh, people are are are, um, are are litigating what are the courts being uh, saying about about those issues and therefore can you therefore uh, change the language a, a bit if if that language is the issue or can you change the scope a bit if scope is the issue can you bring about some uh, amendments to the to the act to make sure that the uh, litigation that is happening uh, on account of may, maybe poor drafting or maybe uh, certain things that were not anticipated uh, could therefore be changed so, so as to bring down litigation yeah so yeah. these are all in the realm of policy making what should be the uh, areas where we must focus on uh should we now promote uh, uh this particular sector uh, what are the uh, challenges of 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 uh, international taxation mm. um, a company that is not based in india is based abroad but earning profits in india how do we tax it uh, in a proper manner um how do we make sure that uh, uh, the rightful taxes that belong to india come to india and i must say that india is playing a very very positive very very uh, proactive role in the international discussions in the area of international tax okay it is respected okay. very widely uh, mm-hmm. in international fora because of its uh, stand its very reasonable stand on various issues its um, um, and the, the, the proactive role it plays in in uh, pe- in ensuring the people all come together on one one page on one platform and uh, make sure that uh, all the countries get their rightful dues uh, from uh, 
the profits uh, made by uh, international uh, players who work in various jurisdictions uh, and earn huge profits in those jurisdictions amazon for example or google or or uh, netflix you know these are the areas these are the companies these are the issues which which are now being addressed uh, internationally and india is playing a very very important role and uh, india is respected for the, the leadership that is showing in these areas and uh, uh, this is one area where which in the coming years will pose a lot of challenges which will um, which um, and uh, and our our people are totally equipped to uh, uh, handle these challenges the, the kind of training that they are imparted on on the issues that uh, confront international taxation transfer pricing uh, we have experts in the tax department now who are exposed to the best practices abroad by way of not only training in the academy in nagpur but also trainings during the course of the uh, services yes. where they are okay. exposed to all these uh, best practices and uh, they they know earlier the tax where the the the, the uh, some of them used to be few steps ahead of the department but mm -hmm. now i'm very very uh, glad to tell that department now is uh, is uh, anticipates all that and department is completely in control of of the station okay okay tell me ajay you know uh, you've been through such an exciting time with the department what made you write the book i'm coming back to the book now yeah so again the reason was that i uh, i i wanted to uh, demystify the tax man i wanted to Uh, bring him to center stage to shed the spotlight on him, to bring him out from the uh, wings, from the shadows, and to tell people that this is who he is, this is what he does, this is what the challenges are in his in his career, this is what he does in his spare time, this is uh, uh, the job that he does, which he he uh, knows is 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 thankless. he does it to the best of his ability there are certain aberrations in every department in every field in every company so do not go by those aberrations see the so see the totality and therefore i urge the media also to play a a a a positive role in this because they only highlight the the negative aspects they only highlight a uh, one sided picture you know somebody dying in a raid somebody having a heart attack in a raid mm. uh, some some particular uh, tax person using course the means to collect that's an aberration by and large it's a department which is a very very law abiding department they know exactly what the uh, issues are they know they also pay the taxes themselves <laughs> absolutely they are the family members they all pay taxes and uh, uh, they do it to the best of the ability and uh, so this is the aim of the book that this is what he does this is what who he is he's just like you and me do not fear him do not place him on a pedestal do not decry him do not uh uh call him things which he is not mm. appreciate the kind of work he does why he does okay. it what's the role of the work that he does what is the mm. ultimate um uh, uh you know uh, end result of the of the monies that are, are collected by the tax department and uh uh see it objectively see it from that particular standpoint okay so now i have a last question which is more that you know if supposing i just have 20 minutes which are the sections you would definitely want me to read from this particular book i would urge you to read uh from page 1 till the last page I've got twenty uh, minutes only. <laughs> it's a very light, easy, uh, racy mm. reading, irreverent uh, at times, tongue in cheek. Like I said, mm. uh, to make it more palatable, to to counter uh, uh, act the, uh, the 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 serious subtext that uh, underlies uh, the work that he does. Uh, you 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 find it a very interesting weekend reading. yeah it's an easy to read uh and if after this book you can understand the taxman better yeah. understand what he does uh, i would have achieved my my objective sure because i do think i've read parts of it and i do think i'm understanding a lot more 
but thanks ajay this was really enriching really enjoyed the session and i'm going to make sure that i read every page i do think it's not going to take me too long to read it no, no, so no just a weekend just a weekend okay and, uh, okay. Uh, thank you so much for, for having me here and uh, i i i hope the people uh, find it uh, interesting and productive and and educative and uh, uh, look forward to uh, to such uh, discussions in the future as well thank you so much thank you wow it was a great it was great to know your experience sir really a great experience and it's a pleasure to have you here for the sgr knowledge foundation series session i would like to thank mr ajay mankodia sir and reema gupta ma'am for their insightful discussion and giving their precious time for this sgr knowledge foundation 64th knowledge series session i also thank chairman of raisoni group of institutions mr sunil raisoni for giving this opportunity and readomania publication for the support to this session also a big thanks to all our viewers for attending this session the session will be there on the orange city literature festival in nagpur youtube channel and sgr knowledge foundation facebook page till then stay tuned we'll be coming up with more sessions with various insightful topics in the next coming sgr knowledge foundation series for more event updates please subscribe to our sgr kf facebook page and ocnf youtube channel once again thank you so much sir thank you so much ma'am okay thank time. you bye bye Beyond.